So New World has dropped the PTR patch notes on us for the expansion. There are a lot of things in these patch notes that I didn't quite expect to be coming into the game, but they are coming in the game nonetheless. I think there are a ton of good things coming into the game as well, but this video is going to be a coverage of the patch notes in their entirety. This is a little bit different than videos that I normally post because whenever I usually do this type of video, I do a very curated type of video for the patch notes specifically. But for this one in particular, my Twitch chat has talked me into posting just the raw unedited footage of the Twitch stream whenever we went over the patch notes. So bear in mind, this is just the initial thoughts as I was going through the patch. I didn't have a lot of time to digest the information. We just went over all the patch notes in their entirety. And I'm sure as time goes on, my opinion on some of these things may change as we get to play the PTR, etc. But I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you do, please make sure to like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate that as well. And if you don't like this format, please let me know down in the comments below because I don't want to post videos that you guys aren't interested in watching. But again, this is just completely raw footage from the stream earlier today. I hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get on to the badge notes. Let's go through them. All right, PTR, Rise of the Angry Earth. Greetings, adventurers. The tournament is an ever-evolving world, and as such, we continue our efforts in providing our players with an assortment of ongoing new features, content, and changes. Similar to the activities leading up to our latest major update, we're approaching the release of Rise of the Angry Earth, and would like to once again invite you all to participate in the iteration of our public test realm. Read on to the PTR features and release notes. All right, so here we go. This is just information about the PTR. So the PTR is going to officially open September the 12th at 8 a.m. PT, 3 p.m. UTC, it's going to run until 8 a.m. PT, uh, 3 p.m. UTC on September the 18th. So what is that? Six days? If you encounter a bug, exploit, or have suggestions to improve a feature or a piece of content. Okay, that's all that. So then during the iteration of the PTR, we look forward to hearing your playtest feedback on the following changes. So the Elysian's Wild Zone, Rise of the Angry Earth main story quest is going to be in this PTR. The Eden Grove and Great Cleave main story quest revamp. I'm very interested to see if we get houses in Eden Grove now. Uh, that's going to be one of the things we check out on the PTR. The Savage Divide Expedition. Force mounts, artifacts, the flail, the weapon perk changes, the primal fury heart rune, trade skill and gear score changes, influence race, season three reward track. All right, so this just tells you how to get into the PTR, the PTR backstory loadouts, the PTR fact. All right, so we can just skip through all of this. So now here we go. We're going to start on the world experience right here. General. Here we go, boys and girls. Influence race. That should be in the patch, Atrinix. It should be. It should be in here. Artifacts probably the most important for me. Yeah, me too. I'm interested to see how those go. We're about to check them out. Yo, BTS CPR, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Christian, thank you for the sub, homie. I appreciate that as well. For some reason, my notifications are completely turned off, and I don't know why. Uh, Woo! Thank you for the sub. Well, there it goes. It, I guess they're just delayed. I don't know what's going on. All right, let's keep this going. Let's go through the notes. General, Mangled Heights and Malevolence have both Woo! been converted to solo landmarks. On you. Hey, no thank you, Kraft. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Jude, thank you for the follow. So Mangled Heights and Malevolence have both been converted to solo landmarks. They updated the appearance of Brightwood Tavern Keeper and the Banana Pile can now be picked up in housing. Wait, what? The Banana Pile can now be picked up in housing? Was that an item that you just couldn't pick up? I guess it was bugged. Notable fixes. Fix an issue that prevented progression in the quest uh, out of his misery. Fix an issue that caused some brimstone glyphs to not appear in the correct locations. So that's good. Updated the text in the Waste Not Want Not quest for consistency. Fix an issue with a description and quest markers for something to celebrate. And killing an unhallowed devout will no will now progress the quest a king's defense. So just fixing some quests here. Some minor fixes. Now we have expeditions, barnacles, and black powder. They fix an issue that caused the blue ray around the cannonball to appear pixelated. They resolved an issue that caused Admiral Black Powder's final line to cut out too early. And then Lazarus, they fix an issue that caused the last chest to not unlock for all players. So, well, that's good. I didn't know that was a thing. Imperium Forge, fix an issue that caused Commander Marius' fireballs to not reach their intended destination. All right. I haven't ran any of these expeditions in a while, so I, I wasn't aware of some of these problems, but it's good they're fixing them. AI updates. Here we go. Notable fixes. Fix an issue that caused a Tribune Elias Master of the Hounds to not deal melee damage. They adjusted the level of several invasions and outposts rush AI to account for player power increases. All right. So that's good. Invasions and outpost rush AI. Okay, so I'm assuming whenever we have 700 gear score, they're just they're just accounting for that. So combat changes. So this answers the question about invasions that I kind of had. They are still intended to be an in-game feature because if they're adjusting the level of the invasion and outpost rush AI to account for player power, I would assume that means that invasions are now going to be 700 gear score, right? That's that's what I would think. Finally, the tank room glass fix. Oh snap! We'll get to that here in just a second, I guess. All right. 
So general, weakened status effects can now reduce the effects of acid damage. Interesting. All right. Fix an issue where the rune glass of sighted carnelian gems cause taunts to not trigger when slotted into weapons. There it is. That's the fix you're talking about. Nice. So now if you have a rune glass of sighted carnelian, your taunts are going to trigger when they're slotted into weapons. That's great. That's th That's been a bug for a while, I think. Fix an issue that made some attack chains cause client server desync. So that's great. We don't always, I mean, anytime we're fixing desyncs, that's a great thing. I hope hopefully they work. Reduce self healing by 10% and consumable healing by 20% while on PVP game modes. Interesting, bro. So self healing. So they're reducing self healing and consumable healing by 20%, self healing by 10%. Dang, dude! Woo, man, you put the sub. Yo, lots of games. Thank you. Or lots of goat names. Thank you for the follow. I pre or the sub. I'm sorry. Thank you for the tier one. I appreciate it, bro. Welcome in. That's crazy. So there, that's actually pretty big. Twenty percent healing nerf from consumables while in PvP. That's gonna adjust the time to kill quite a lot, I think. Increase dodge distance for medium and heavy equip loads. Okay, so I guess they're trying to. Uh, that wow, I didn't expect that change coming in either. You can now dodge further with medium and heavy equip loads. We'll have to test that whenever we get access to the PTR. I'm interested to see exactly how that changed. Updated medium dodge animations to better maintain speed throughout the animation and improve transitions to sprint out of dodge for all equip loads. Okay, interesting. Reduce medium hit sprint delay to 0.75 seconds from one second and light hit sprint delay from one second to 1.5 seconds. Okay, all right. So they're messing with some dodges here. Set limiters, hold on, set limiters for a variety of life steals across various weapons and perks to either have a 0.1 second cooldown if life steals associated with all attacks or the attack is more of a single target focus attack or a three target limit if the attack is more of an AOE or designated or designed to be a cleaving style ability. Wait, what? Set limiters for a variety of life steals across various weapons and perks to either have a 0.1 second cooldown if life steal is associated with all attacks or the attack is more of a single target focus attack. Oh, I see. Or a three target limit if the attack is more of an AOE or designed to be a cleaving style ability. So now there's going to be limiters for life stealing. I see. I see how that works. So life stealing is just getting nerfed, basically. It's not going to be near as strong as it was. At least that's how I'm reading that, right? No more mortal lifestyle, life staff users in 1v1s. Maybe not. I mean, I think that's what they're trying to address, it seems like, which I think is good. Some attack chains, I uh, barely works. What do you mean some attack chains? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> is it 300 dex change? What do you mean? Is there, oh, down here? Oh boy, we'll check that out in a minute. These are interesting though. These dodge changes, we're going to have to think about these a little bit. I'm going to, I'm interested to test those on the PTR. Those could end up being some pretty big changes. Attribute bonuses. So updated the 250 strength attribute bonus to apply to the entire basic melee attack and not just on startup. Okay. Interesting. Added two new attribute perk bonuses. Hold on, this I, this is because we're getting, okay, 350, okay. So added two new attribute bonus nodes at 25 and 350. So now we're getting those, so we knew those were coming in. We just didn't know exactly where. Also updated the functionality of and moved around several existing nodes, okay. Updated the 300 attribute, uh, or the 300, up, shoot. Updated the dex 300 attribute bonus to no longer be dodge stamina reduction. What? It will now cleanse CC status effects on weapon swap with a 15 second cooldown. Wait, what? So now if you're CC'd, you just swap weapons and then you'll, it has a 15, wait, am I reading this right? So if you have 300 decks, you can swap weapons and cleanse your CC status effects, but there's a 15 second cooldown. So if you get stunned, if you get caught in 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 a uh, shockwave, you just swap weapons. Can you even swap weapons while you're stunned? Can you do that? Is that can, it, wait what? That's actually huge. Increased HP gain from leveling slightly. That's something we definitely want to test right here. This is something we definitely want to test. This is very interesting change right here. I think that's way stronger. Then the then the uh, damage then the dodge stamina reduction, bro. Being able to get out of CC like that is crazy. That's crazy. Increased HP gain from leveling slightly and increase the amount of HP gain from Constitution slightly. Okay, done to account for the gear score and level increases. And again, we're gonna have to test a lot of this stuff on the PTR. But on paper, this sounds bonkers to me. <laughs> As your neighborhood dex idiot, I love it. Yo, Christian, let's go, dude.
<laughs> Meanwhile, 300 in has the effects of a cut pristine diamond for one light attack. This is that's that's a crazy change right there, bro. I did not expect that to be coming out of left field. So what is the 350 dex perk, I wonder? And what are the 25 and 350 we're going to get for all of these perks or for all these attribute bonuses? I guess we'll find out in the PTR. Damage changes. I don't know if those are in the patch notes or not. The attribute bonuses, maybe they're somewhere. Maybe they're lower. Damage changes. Uh, increased ranged and magic weapons base damage globally. All right. So ranged and magic weapons base damage is now increased. But they reduce their base damage back down again in PvP fights. So, is that, hold on. So, only in PvP? Increase, increased ranged and magic weapons base damage globally. But then they reduce their base damage back down again in PvP fights. So, they're starting to separate PvP and PvE. <laughs> Sparks, yeah, for sure. What terrible wording. I don't understand. I, I, like, this is, I don't know. Keep reading. Okay. This change was made to increase the effectiveness of these weapons in PvE without disrupting PvP balance. Okay, there it is. Okay, interesting. Which is a problem. I mean, ranged and magic weapons do not... They're still not used very much in PvE. So, I see what they're trying to do. This is very interesting. They're trying to separate them a lot now. Flyout present in game modes. Flyout present in game modes menu in the bottom of the weapon mastery tooltip shows balance changes tuned separately for PvP and PvE. Okay. Okay. So the musket increased base damage from 78 to 83 in PvE, then reduced it by 12% in PvP down to 73. Oh, dang, dude. Bow increased base damage from 67 to 72 in PvE, then reduced it by 14% in PvE down and PvP down to 4, 62. Okay, blunderbuss. Increased base damage from 78 to 80 in PvE, then reduced it by 9% in PvP down to 73. And then reduced self-healing power in PvP game modes by 10%. Okay, we've seen that up above. And reduce consumable healing power in PvP game modes by 20%. We've seen that up above as well. That's crazy. Written by AI? No, bro. <laughs> no. This is a lot of patch notes to write. Can you imagine being the one to have to write this? It's a, this is a lot of stuff. I would hate to write these patch notes. They gave up on that vision, so maybe there's hope to give up the territory control system in the future too. I hope so. But they, they definitely did. They're definitely splitting them up now, which I think is a good thing. I think it's a good thing. What do you guys think about splitting up PvP and PvE? Uh, chat and YouTube. What do you guys think about splitting up PvP and PvE? Because I, I personally think it's a great thing. Yo, Cell Barracks, thank you guys for the follows. I appreciate it. Welcome in. High 20 gig patch. It's going to be a huge patch. It's going to be a huge patch. About time. About time is a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be hyped to write this stuff because you know it's good. This stuff is good. It's necessary. They need to. So yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's good. I think this is a necessary change that needs to be made to the game. I think this is a great change in my opinion. They needed to do that a long time ago. Yep, it needed to be done since day. Yeah, I agree. I think this is good. Huge step in the right direction, I think. Add inherent crit damage reduction to players based on equip load. So, okay, this is interesting too because they're taking away resilient. So now they're adding inherent crit damage reduction to players based on their equip load because resilient is no longer a thing. So light is negative 15%, medium is negative 20%, and heavy is negative 25%, which makes sense to me. You would obviously mitigate more crit in heavy and medium than you would in light. There's made to a change for the removal of the resilient perk. I, I personally think this is fine. I think this is pretty good as well. I, I like I'm not mad at this. I think this is this is this is nice. I have to wait and see how it actually feels playing in those different equip loads, but I like the idea of what they're trying to do there. But I think there probably will be there's just there's gonna be other meta perks that emerge. I think that's I think that's inevitable, but hopefully this will uh, allow for a little bit more variety with builds instead of having these required perks like ward bane resilient. This is good. Slightly increase the diminishing returns on the damage bonus multipliers or modifiers from attributes from 351 to 500. Wait, what? Slightly increase the diminishing returns on the damage bonus modifiers from attributes from 351 to 500. Okay. It says slightly, so I don't know what that's going to mean, but it sounds like we can go above 350 now and not get as much diminishing returns on our damage. So maybe we'll have builds that are viable to push like 400 or something. So no 600 dex bows. No, but I mean, you do get diminishing returns, but it says it slightly... Oh, it slightly increased the diminishing returns. Oh, slightly increased the diminishing returns. I read that backwards. So they're they're nerfing it. So if you go beyond 351, okay, your diminishing returns are worse now. I see. All right, all right. I read that wrong. I read that wrong. So if you go... If you push way on up into dex, you're still... You're getting diminishing returns or more diminishing returns, right? I am reading that right now. When doing damage to a target, the abilities equipped by uh, that specific weapon will now be used to apply additional on-hit status effects to the abilities equipped by the currently active weapon, which can differ. 
When doing damage to a target, the abilities equipped by that specific weapon will now be used to apply additional on-hit status effects instead of the abilities equipped by the currently active weapon, which can differ. I'm confused. Wait, I got to read this again for the third time. I don't understand. When doing damage to a target, the abilities equipped by that specific weapon will now be used to apply additional on-hit status effects instead of the abilities equipped by the currently active weapon, which can differ. I don't understand. I, I, I don't understand this. What does this mean, chat? Help me out here. Assume it will do damage based on the ability instead of the weapon base damage. Is that what this means? Is that what this means? I don't understand this. When doing damage, maybe I'm just too stupid to understand this. I don't know. My head hurts. Yeah. I, I Maybe like are we applying bleeds? <sighs> Bro, I'm not sure. When doing damage to a target, the abilities equipped by that specific weapon will now be used to apply additional on-hit status effects instead of the abilities equipped by the currently active weapon? What? It means next bullet point. Uh, bro, I get, I don't understand it. Do you guys? I don't understand. Something related to something he likes, like football, baby. I don't, I mean, chat, I don't get it. Do you? When doing damage to a target, the abilities equipped by that specific weapon the abilities equipped by that specific weapon will now be used to apply additional on hit status effects. I don't understand, bro. Somebody's gonna to, somebody's gonna to to explain that one to me. Maybe maybe YouTube. Maybe you guys can explain it to me in the comments below. I I don't know. I I don't understand that at all. I don't know what that means. Like if you apply a bleed and switch weapons, it scales off that weapon rather than the one you swap to. Bro, that's poorly worded. If that's what that means, that makes sense. I, I understand what you're saying for sure. Maybe that's what this means. I don't know. That's confusing. The way that's written is confusing to me. All right. Well, maybe that's what it means. Hopefully, will. Just don't edit out how many times you actually read that. I'm not. This is going straight to YouTube unedited, just like it is right now. Sorry, YouTube. This is what you're getting. Added acid damage resistance to various existing status effects, gems, and other effects to allow it to function similarly to any other damage type. All right. Cool. <laughs> Bro, get out of here, man. Sword and shield. Fix an issue with the slow from Leaping Stripe can be refreshed by some damage over time ticks. Okay, that's good. I mean, Sword and Shield is still really strong. Fix an issue that caused some lower tier shields to have better uh, better block stamina damage than higher tier shields. Shields just work really weird. I hope that they still... I, I hope that shields begin to get reiterated with the introduction of the flail in the shield situation. Shields are just strange. <laughs> you're used to, you're not better than hey listen man you're all listen i love you all the same sparks okay adjusted windshield and ice spikes ability to be treated as ranged instead of melee attacks okay all right interesting so that's gonna affect some perks right i don't i'm not an ice gauntlet user a whole lot but that definitely will affect some things i don't know how, how significant is this for you ice gauntlet users adjusting windshield and ice spikes abilities to now be treated as ranged instead of melee when i can throw my shield like captain america I mean, bro, <laughs> that'd be crazy, huh? Maybe with a maybe with an artifact shield. Wouldn't that be nice? Tai Shield's getting some love with the flail. Yeah, that's gonna be dope for sure. Elemental aversion now affects them. Yeah, exactly. That's where that's where my mind went to was the aversions. Uh elemental aversion is gonna be strong. Yeah, that's where my mind immediately went to was like elemental aversion because you can get around elemental aversion by using this because they were melee. So that's interesting. This is a pretty interesting change. So overall, it seems like it might be a nerf. Because a lot of people run Elio version anyway. I don't know if this is, that's going to hold true after the patch or not, but interesting. All right. Well, Bo, fix an issue that caused the catch me if you can buff to get stuck on players until they logged out. Okay. All right. Well, okay. That's good, I guess. <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. Blunderbuss. Fix an issue that allowed splitting grenade to cancel mortar charge and fire without cooldown. I think this is the, I think this is the, this is the big one they've been talking about a little bit right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read out loud, but he didn't. The man is two steps ahead. And I don't know what he does. Wait, what? Remove the damage fall off of basic shots fired from 10 meters to 14 meters away. I don't know what you guys are talking about. I have no idea. I think you're trying to bait me into saying something I shouldn't. Remove the damage fall off from basic shots fired from 10 meters to 14 meters away. Three fix from uh, Blunderbuss is for me. Uh, is it? Updated the Blunderbuss to be fully loaded when initially equipped. This fixes issues where the Blunderbuss would have awkward animations when initially equipping and unsheathing it. Ah, nice. Fix an issue that caused splitting grenades, child grenade explosions to not deal damage. All right. So, okay. So the, I think the big one is this top one right here, right? For all you blunderbuss users, I would assume. 
Rapier. Fix an issue that caused the controlled breathing passive for the rapier to trigger off of some damage over time, Ticks. The child grenade. I think it means the grenades that split off. The smaller grenades. That's, that's what I think it is. Fix an issue that caused the controlled breathing passive for the rapier to trigger off of... Uh, okay, okay. Fix an issue where the rapier's flurry animation could be canceled uh, to cast Tondo twice. I did not know that was a thing. Musket. Updated musket to use projectiles instead of hit scan. There it is, chat. Holy crap, dude. That's massive. That is such a massive fix. I've been preaching this for a long time with the musket. I think the musket has been terrible. It's been a plague to the game for a long time. Projectiles instead of hit scan. Yeah, I like those applause. Spam those things. That deserves applause for sure. That's crazy, bro. A lot of musket players out there might be angry at this, but I think that needed to happen. That is massive. Surely there will be no issues. Yeah, I hope that uh, I hope that this is implemented right and, and, and it's not all buggy, but that is huge. That's huge, bro. That's huge, bro. Dang. I did not expect that. I did not see that coming in. What does that mean? So projectiles, think of the bow where you have to lead your target. Ah! And you have to actually like aim and shoot uh, like with a musket. It's like a laser, right? Like if somebody can be running as long as your reticle is on their head and you pull the trigger, it'll shoot them. It'll hit them, right? A, a projectile is like the bow where you have to kind of lead somebody and have to run into it type of situation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Got the bullets have travel time like arrows. Yes, that's huge, man. That's, that is a crazy change that I did not see coming into the game. Bro, I am so happy with that right now. That I'm so happy with that. That is, a, I think that's massive. Some people may not agree, but I think it's huge. YouTube, what do you guys think? I'd love to know in the comments below. Let me know. Do you like this? Do you not like it? I freaking love it. I love it. Keep reading. Added functionality to allow the musket projectiles to have bullet penetration through targets natively. Wait, what? Added functionality to allow the musket projectiles to have bullet penetration through targets natively. What does that mean? It won't affect aimbots? Maybe not. Yo, Damone, uh, Jay Lee, thank you for the follow-up. Welcome in. Do the projectiles uh, have drop-off and, uh, and drop-off damage in New World? Uh, drop-off damage, not necessarily, but they do, they do have drop-off. I don't know how the musket's going to work now, but... I don't understand what this means. Added functionality to allow the musket projectiles to have bullet penetration through targets natively. I don't understand what that means either. Significantly increase the musket's accuracy. We'll have some slight variance, but much much uh, less than a previous hit. I think this is probably fine because of this update right here. I think this is probably fine. Uh, up to keep reading. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. The musket being hit scan was a major issue, 100%. I am so glad they fixed it, bro. It's crazy. Updated several passives and upgrades to account for the functional changes to the musket. So hide precision, removed aiming requirements. Wait, what? What does this mean? I don't know. I don't know what this passive is because I don't play the musket a whole heck of a lot. I have I, I every now and then we'll throw it on just to see. But like I do with most weapons, but I don't know what this removed aiming requirements for height and precision. That's just for the passive upgrades. I'm not real sure what that affects, though. I don't know what the aiming precision or the height and precision passive does. Hit your mark, rename to optimal range that gives damage bonus based on distance to the target, granting optimal damage while between 20 and, and 50 meters. All right, called shot, increased damage that reduces time from three seconds to two seconds. Greater accuracy, rename to quick load and updated functionality to shorten the duration of the reload of two targets hit with a single shot. Uh, steady hands, rename to shell shock and updated functionality to weaken targets. Bro, the musket got completely reworked basically. Updated the critical uh, reload functionality. It will now trigger off of two headshots and reduce the duration of the next reload instead of completely skipping it. All right. Updated the sniper ultimate to now be dead eye and remove the zoom functionality. The next shot will now inflict bleed as an added effect for hitting multiple targets with a single shot. Okay. Oh, geez. Traps. Traps will now deal damage uh, when it triggers. Will now remain in the world for 30 seconds instead of 20 seconds. So there's a little bit of buff to trap sticky bombs. Remove the aim state for sticky bombs and will be thrown immediately on button press. Ah, okay. Interesting. That'll adjust how that's played quite a lot, I imagine, for musket users. Adjust the projectile spawn location, angle trajectory, and gravity of the sticky bomb to account for the instant throw. Okay. Power shot increase the damage from 150 to 170. And a little damage increase. Power shots. Power shot additional functionality that causes it to deal additional damage against hostile AI targets. Added a one second cooldown when switching between power shot and powder burn without firing. Fix an issue that caused the effect from the musket. Back it up passive to not always be removed from weapon swap. 
I mean, they basically reworked the entire musket. A lot of those passives, I'm not 100% sure without looking them up exactly what they do. Because again, I don't play the musket a ton. But what I know is overall, I see what they're trying to do and I like it. This is amazing. That's a huge, huge change right there, man. That's crazy. You mean fixed? Yeah, <laughs> they gutted musket again. Bro, I don't, man, musket just doesn't fit in the game, in my opinion. I don't think it's ever fit in New World with the hit scan functionality that it had before. I just don't think it fit into the game, bro. Uh, I just, I just don't. I think it ruined a lot of people's experience playing the game. And I think changing it to this should help. The problem that I have with the musket, and I always have had, is like, how do you fix it to make it a viable weapon in all situations? Like, how do you fix it to make it a viable weapon in PvE? Because in my opinion, I don't know if it ever will be. And then how do you fix it to make it a viable weapon in PvP? I don't know. But this is a step in the right direction, I think. I think this is great, bro. I'm super excited. I haven't talked about that musket change beforehand. Me too. That's a crazy big change. A crazy big change, bro. It's crazy. Void Gauntlet. Fix an issue that caused some in attribute bonuses to not apply to the Void Gauntlet. Fix an issue that caused the player to not return to Void uh, Blade basic attack after casting Essence Rupture when Void Blade was active. Okay. Hatchet, fix an issue that caused the hatchet final blow upgrade to not deal damage. Fix an issue that caused the berserk ability to be canceled and activated without playing the animation. Oh man. Oh man. Wait. Wait. Does that mean what I think it means? <laughs> Does that mean we can't dodge roll an animation cancel berserk anymore? Does that mean what I think it means, bro? They, ah, oh, no, dude. There's a Berserk animation cancel. Yeah, there's a bunch of Berserk animation cancels. I use them on the daily, bro. <laughs> yeah, shoot. Oh, man. Okay, that's probably needed to be fixed. All right, if we're being honest, the animation cancels probably need to go. They probably need to go, okay? All right, Fire Staff. Updated the Pyro Dancer upgrade to add a 2.5 second cooldown of the player's staggered while using Flamethrower. There it is, chat. There it is. So now, what is the Pyro Dancer upgrade? What is the Pyro Dancer upgrade? So the Pyro Dancer upgrade adds a 2.5. Which one is that, bro? So now Flamethrower has a cooldown. That's that should have came. That should have happened a long time ago, dude. How much FPS you get when Elite Chest runs a brimstone? Uh I I have a 13900. I have a, a 4990. I mean, I still have FPS issues sometimes though on Brimstone. I'm still gonna kill you with it, bro. You hey, back up. Your flamethrower is getting nerfed. I like it. I think this should have happened a long time ago, bro. I, I made this suggestion a long time ago. Like it, hate it, love it, whatever. I, like, I, I try to look at the whole game objectively. Sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. In this situation, I don't think I was wrong. I think the flamethrower needed a cooldown from a long time ago. Personally, I think the flamethrower is just not a great ability anyway. Like, I think the flamethrower just should have been reworked and they should have just changed the ability. I think it's a boring ability and it's just my opinion, okay? I think it's a boring ability to use. And I wish they would have changed it. I, I like, I wish they would have changed it a while back, but I think it did need a cooldown. It's kind of silly that the, that the ability had zero cooldown. So I don't know, man, that's another crazy ability. That's very controversial within new world, but I, I like this change personally. I think it's a good one. I think it's a good one. Probably a passive change to, uh, there's probably a passive that changed it to 0.1 sex. <laughs> Maybe you back in new world. Uh, yeah, I mean, never really left. I mean, we always, we're going to be here. I just, you know, we've just been doing other stuff while we're waiting for the expansion. There's not a lot going on in New World at the moment, but we're, we're here for sure. For sure, for sure. Only when staggered. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I think it did need a cooldown, but it says if the player is staggered, then it triggers the cooldown, which I think is fair. Double the hit rate of the ability damage and dot damage uh, and half the damage of both. This was done to make the hits trigger faster, but deals less damage. Double the hit rate and the ability uh, damage and dot damage and have the damage of both. Okay. So they just hit faster. So essentially, so essentially you're gonna do the same damage, I guess. Also increase the number of stacks on a target to trigger the accelerated flamethrower from two stacks to four stacks to compensate. I mean, bro, all right, dude, all right. Yo, the Luna, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it, welcome in. All right. AB, 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 select start and fire to get one second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I gotta agree with that. Yeah, and PVE. I mean, yeah, and maybe that, and maybe this won't be a thing for PVE. I don't know because they're trying to adjust them or change them. But it says if the player is staggered, so maybe in PVE it'll be the same. I'm not sure, 
but I think this is a good change, bro. I think it's something that needed to happen. Like, I know this is gonna, I know this is gonna make a lot of people mad. The fire staff is the most controversial weapon in New World, bro. Anytime it's touched, anytime it's nerfed, anytime it's buffed, people go crazy. I don't know why, but it's the, it is the most controversial weapon in the entire game. And uh, people are super attached to the fire staff. I, I don't know. But this to me should have happened. It needed to happen. And I think it's a good change. I, I, I really do. I think that's a great change. All right, great axe. Fix an issue that caused great axes, greed and swords empowering stab passives and power effects to not refresh properly on reapplication. Okay, Warhammer, fix an issue where the outnumber passive will still be active after hitting enemies. And <laughs> that's, I did not know that was a thing. That's good, they're fixing that. Fix an issue that caused the Devour Heart Rune to fail to cast when your camera was angled upward on hills. Okay, I mean, there's only a select few people that even have the Devour Heart Rune, I think. I haven't even used mine. I have them, I haven't even used them. I I'm trying to upgrade them right now, but I haven't even used it, not once. I haven't even equipped it and used it since we've had it, we've had it forever. Due to the detonate being uh, able to inherit, da to inherit damage from players and its power being well beyond what was intended, we reduced its power. Reduced base damage by 20% and increased the rend on the Brutal variant from 30 to 50. They're still nerfing detonate, man. That It was so overtuned. Didn't they just nerf this a little while ago, right? Dang, bro. Must get changed to make me... I know, bro, I know. I know. It's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. As a fire staff man, I think they should nerf it more. No, nah, I mean, I don't... I don't, I'm not all for like nerfing everything into the ground all the time whenever something seems strong. I mean, I think players need to adapt to a degree for sure, but having something that was just on constant no cooldown just made it not very fun. I think that is a good a good change. Why do they keep nerfing detonate? Because it's just cr crazy strong. It has been for the, from the beginning. I think whenever, whenever you have most of your player base using a particular item, it's going to get looked at and probably get hit, you know? Yeah. You know? Everyone read detonate? Yeah, exactly. Which I think is fine. I mean, detonate just does... It still does a lot of damage. Like, it's just crazy. You can just do so much burst damage with it. You can lock somebody down, just detonate, and just blow people up. Perks. Reworked perks. Reworked perks across the board with the following goals. Drop gear should have a much higher chance of yielding three usable perks. I mean, that's great. That's, that's excellent. Players shouldn't need to collect a large number of required sets of gear. Heck yeah, dude. Remove perk combinations that are never usable very nice baby let's go all right these are fantastic changes so far let's go stone form on top now i think maybe so i mean i use stone form too it's it's, it's a good one we'll see how it works out i mean i think detonate will still get used but i it i mean maybe not maybe there'll be, there will be something that rises above now we'll see all right i always like vines i use vines sometimes too notable changes greatly reduce bad perk combinations by removing or improving unused perks example mana hate reduction etc all right dude this is so good reduce the effectiveness of most used and easy to reach conditional perks so they don't outshine all the others example keen and vicious okay so reduce the effectiveness of most used and easy to reach conditional perks so now keen, it looks like keen and vicious are getting nerfed and a lot of the other perks are getting nerfed i think this overall might be fine because we want to see a variety of builds with variations of perks on there i think that should always be the goal whenever you have these items in the game you want players to use them and you don't want to introduce things that players just aren't going to use so we'll see how this works everyone runs keen's vicious keen vicious well that's because it is a easy to reach conditional perk like they're saying here it's just one of the most common and and it, it's very strong like vicious is so strong Reduce the number of required gear sets a player needs to collect through the removal of ward and resistance. That is so good, bro. This is music to my ears. Music to everyone's ears, I think. So good, dude. Remove perks that impact on server performance. Example, we remove chain, reduce CDR perks, and added maximum stacks. Bro. So chain is no longer a perk reduced the cooldown reduction perks and they added maximum stacks so does that mean like refreshing move and and uh, the other refreshing are gone is that what that means is that what they're saying here removed cdr perks and added maximum stacks so maybe now there's just one perk refreshing ward yeah all the refreshing perks seems like they may be reduced and now refreshing takes its place and there's just maximum stacks of refreshing you can get i don't know i don't know exactly what that means but that's interesting Reduce them basically. Uh, combine two stat perks to reduce the total number. Example, strength dex and dex strength are now the same. W wait, what? Combine two stat perks to reduce the total number. 
So strength dex and dex strength. Oh, because they're, okay, they're making them match now. This is what we were talking about the other day and I got confused because I thought they were making the equal. This is where I got confused because I thought they were making attribute skill the same, but this is what they meant. They're just making them equal. So yeah, no more 10, six, no more. Yeah, nothing like that. It's gonna be 50-50, it'll be even. So whenever you have a strength dex weapon or item or whatever, it'll be even now, I see. See, that's, I got confused with that statement whenever they made it the other day. And, and I, I, I made a, a misstatement on the podcast. I got confused, but I fully understand now. All of your items are now going to have the same attribute. It's going to be even on your attribute, which is nice. I think that's a fine change. That's that simple. Sometimes simple is better, right? So a lot of times you can overcomplicate things. And I think this was a case of doing that. And I like, I, I kind of like that they're changing this for sure. Yo, what up, Ty Ty? How are you? Welcome in. All right, added new perks to the categories that have the lowest number of combinations. Example, healing staffs had a very narrow perk range, so we added more life staff perks. So this will be very interesting to see what kind of perks we get for some of these weapons. Because it seems like there's going to be a lot that's not inside of these patch notes, unless we just haven't gotten to it yet. Which we're not even halfway through, so excuse me. All right. Common perk change. So, oh, so refreshing is in here, I guess. No, wait, it's not here. Refreshing ward can no longer generate on any new dropped gear. Existing gear with this perk will remain unchanged. Oh, yo, dude. But I think that'll be phased out because your existing gear with refreshing ward on there is all going to be 625 or lower. And so whenever you start getting gear that's higher gear score, refreshing ward will no longer be a thing anyway. So that's probably why they didn't go back and change it on all that gear. Then refreshing evasion, same thing. So they are remove, they are essentially removing ward and evasion. Like refreshing ward, refreshing evasion, essentially out of the game. Luck scaling has been capped and will no longer scale after 625 gear score. Why did they do that, bro? I think they're trying to maybe remove luck from the game at some point, dude. What the heck, man? Uh, said flail scaled with more strength yeah that's a different though that's different the weapon scaling off of strength and dex is probably like a like a 90 60 split or whatever it usually is this means this up here means that now whenever you get an item that is split stat strength dex like an actual item like a piece of gear like an armor piece a jewelry piece a weapon whatever it'll have the same amount of strength and same amount of dex on there if it's a split stat item does that make sense luck is capped yeah luck is capped dude <laughs> weapon perk changes hated can no longer generate on magic and ranged weapons. Okay. Kind. This perk can no longer generate on newly dropped gear. Existing gear with this perk remain unchanged. So essentially, kind out the door. Essentially. Gone. Goodbye hated uh, bow for worm. Yeah, that kind of sucks. This is going to suck for the for the worm fight for sure. Because that's a uh, kind of so garbo. Yeah. But isn't this a strat J-Dub that we've been using in the worm? Don't Aren't they running hated on their bow to maintain aggro so that he doesn't spit? Or are they not running hated on their bow? I think they are, right? I think this is this is like that, that strat, right? Yeah, so that could scuff that up. Rip, man. Rip. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, dang, bro. Kind is gone. Yeah, kind's gone. And nobody, did anybody ever use kind anyway? I mean, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Vicious, reduce the critical damage bonus from 3, 12, 13% to 3, 6, 7. Whoa, dude. Vicious is actually taking a pretty big hit. That's crazy. That's kind of crazy. Life, life stealing getting buffed. I thought life stealing was getting nerfed. Did I read that wrong earlier? <laughs> I should have put chat on the YouTube video. I'm sorry, YouTube. Chat is over here uh, talking at the same time. There's a lot going on. I apologize. I should have put this on the video, but I failed to. Enchanted, reduce the damage bonus from 598, 10.5 to 345%. Dang, bro. Yeah. Enchanted and then Keen is gonna get uh, is gonna get nerfed as well. Runus is going away. Blast is getting nerfed. Refreshing move is it. We just seen that above though. I don't know why they just didn't put this down here. Because these are the it's like they're why didn't they just uh, those, oh, because those are common perk changes, weapon perk changes. Like refreshing move. Okay, so refreshing move is still going to be in the game. All right, I was getting it mixed up. Refreshing ward, refreshing evasion gone. Refreshing move is still going to be here. Okay. Life stealing. They increase the life gain. Oh, here it is. Wait. 
Oh, okay. They added a cooldown on life stealing, but they're increasing the amount of, of life steal that you get. So it is getting buffed. Interesting. Attunement nerf. Oh, I think we all seen that coming though, didn't we? Yo, call me. Oi, thank you for the follow. I appreciate it. Welcome in. Refreshing ward stays on drop gear, not crafted gear. Refreshing ward no longer generate on any new dropped gear. I wonder if you can still craft it. But they said up there they were getting rid of some of them. Removed perks and impacted server performance. Chain reduced CDR perks and added maximum stacks. I bet you can't craft it either, but maybe you can. We'll test it on the PTR. Armor perks in the expansion. Oh, you have? Uh, yeah, sure. Hold on. I'll have to permit you. Hold on a second. I didn't mean to type that in caps. Keenly empowered reduced damage bonus from 20% to 10%? Bro. Keen speed, lower the cooldown from 10 to 7. Siphoning blow. This perk can no longer generate any new on new drop gear, so it's going away. Chain lightning is going away. Chain fire going away. Chain arcane going away. Chain void, chain ice, chain nature. All of those going away. Mortal life steal. Improved scaling after 625. Now grants plus 3, 7, and 10% health. So they're leaving mortal life steal in there. Mortal siphoning, that's going away. Mortal energy is also getting a buff. Mortal fortification increased uh, fortify from 15 to 30 percent, increased duration from 10 seconds to 20 seconds. Keen reduced overall bonus, so they're nerfing Keen. Ancient Bane gone. Angry Earth Bane, Beast Bane, Corrupted Bane, Lost Bane, Human Bane, all that stuff's gone. Vorpal, they are reducing the base scaling multiplier and increasing the scaling past 625. Now grants plus five, eight, and 10 percent headshot damage. Sure footing, increased base move speed from 20% to 30%. Added functionality that pushes and pulls are 20% less effective on you. Yo, that's interesting, bro. That's kind of interesting. So sure footing is getting kind of a buff and a little bit of an added functionality. So pushes and pulls are now 20% less effective. That's kind of that might that might be pretty crazy. Huh. Sorting strikes. Reduce the base scaling multiplier now gives you plus three, plus six, plus seven percent while you have active grit. Change so any heavy attacks, not just fully charged heavy triggers, trenchant strikes. Oh, wait, what? Change so any, oh, any heavy attack. Okay, trenchant crits is the same way. Trenchant ren the same way. Any heavy attack triggers it. All right. Sure footing actually getting interesting now. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty interesting change. Trenchant recovery. All right, that's the same way. And then it is also healing you. Oh, because this trenchant recovery, duh. Now here's you for 5, 20, and 25% of the damage dealt. Dang, bro. 25% of the damage dealt. Is that, is that increased base scaling? I mean, that's pretty good, I think. 25% of the damage dealt. Trench recovery might be nice. Shirking flames, shirking nature, shirking frost. So all of the shirking is getting an increased duration. And then all of the attunements are getting an increased cooldown. So 1.5 seconds on attunement. So attunement is getting nerfed a little bit, but it's only getting nerfed on the cooldown side. But that's an interesting change. It definitely won't be near as good. Penetrating backstab. Change the exclusive label to damage con two. So it can now stack with other damage perks. Okay. All right. That'll be interesting to, to, to create builds of penetrating backstab and other perks. Penetrating headshot. Change the exclusive label to damage con two. So it can now stack with other damage perks. Purifying crits. Lower the cooldown from 10 seconds to three seconds. Damage con too. Yeah, it was just damage con before. They just made it damage con too. Yeah. Trench recovery can now uh, trigger from the downward stab of spear swipe. Oh, yo, is that considered a heavy attack? Is that considered a heavy attack? Uh, yeah, we watched it already, Barracks. Yeah, we already watched the flow video a little bit earlier. Yeah. Uh. You can't send a link. I permitted you earlier. Hold on. I'll permit you again. There you go. Try now. All right. Exhausted exploitation. If you hit a target in the back, you cause exhaustion for five seconds. The allocated punishment increased. I say that word wrong. I'm pretty sure. Increase the damage bonus from 8% to 20%. New weapon perks. All right. Here we go. These will be interesting. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. All right. All right, all right. Uh, I don't know if I clicked that site. <laughs> the link is fine. Okay. <laughs> the link is safe. I checked. Okay. All right. I don't want to click it on on stream though. I'll, I'll check it later. We'll definitely check it.
Jada, what is that? <laughs> what is that? Bro, what is your Discord icon? You're always changing it, dude. <laughs> what is that? Oh, man. Desperate player when you're below 50% mana. Okay, hold on. Here we go. New weapon perk. Savior. Healing is increased by 10, 18, and 20% when you heal a target below 50% health. It's a life staff only. So these are the life staff perks they were talking about a second ago. So when a target is below 50% health, you're going to get increased healing. So that's a new perk called Savior. Purifying Breeze. Heal for uh, 10, 30, and 33% weapon damage every time you remove a debuff from an ally. Desperate Prayer. When you're below 50% mana, your healing will increase by 10, 18, 20%. Desperate and Power. Deal 5, 7, 12% more damage when you are exhausted. Interesting. So are, are life staff users, are there these any like uh, interesting perks that you're going to be adding to your life staff, you think? I mean, I see some pretty crazy ones here that might change things up a little bit. Dude, there's so many changes coming to the game. This is wild. Shield perk changes. Flame Shield Ward. Increase the base from 2% to 5% and increase base scaling. Receive 5, 14, 15% less fire damage. So, okay, hold on. They're increasing the base from 2% to 5% and increasing base scaling. So 15% less fire damage. We're doing it with all the wards. Okay, interesting. So all of the all of the all of the wards, like the Angry Earth Ward. Ancient Ward, all that's gone, but all of these are staying. All the elemental type or specific damage type wards are here still. They're getting buffed. <laughs> My brain cannot digest all this info. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I hope that this changes up a lot of things, though, and there's not just like... I mean, I, I know that's where they're trying to get. It's where it, there's a lot of diversification in builds, you know? Healing on block. Wait, where do you see that at? Did I miss that? Did I read over that? Where's that at? Oh, right here. New shield perks. I hadn't got there yet. Healing defense. This is on your shield. Unblock. Heal for 100, 250, 100. It's on the kite shield, bro. Okay. Bro. All right. The kite shield's going to be in play now, I think, for sure. You also have a perk called counterattack. On block, you gain 30% in power for four seconds. Bro, the Kite Shield's getting some love. The Kite Shield's getting some major love. Making Kite Shields viable. That's crazy, bro. It needed it though, man. I don't know about this. This seems pretty crazy, but nobody ever used Kite Shields. Why would you use Kite Shields? But now there's definitely a reason. That's nuts, man. That's nuts. Also, didn't they say something in the video about staggering people with the kite shield i don't see that in here anywhere maybe we'll get to it in a minute crazy yeah garnet that's what yeah that's what i was thinking too yeah stagger on block i thought so but i don't know maybe it's not a perk maybe that's just inherent to the kite shield because these are talking about perks maybe that's just inherent to the actual kite shield itself i don't know quit the game at level 36 so i'll be able to catch up expansion like three hours a day gameplay uh yeah you would if you started now for sure yeah, you'll be able to get to level 60 pretty fast. And then uh, expertise is going away out of the game. So you don't even have to worry about leveling up to 625 right now. Just get to level 60 and you'll be good. You'll be ready to go for the expansion. That was flail plus kite shield combo. Maybe so. Yeah, probably inherent perk. I wonder if it is for flail kite shield. And that's it. I wish I could dual wield kite shields. You would, bro. Ability perk changes. Crippling feral rush. Improve the slow scaling. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, 20% weapon is 26, 50, or 26, 47, and 50%. Barrel Rush now does bonus damage. Okay. 25% bonus damage if it's on your weapon. Keen Berserk. I always thought Keen Berserk was not a great perk. Improve the critical bonus scaling. Armor and weapon, 50%. Keen Berserk now also improves damage while below 50% health. Okay, interesting. Both of those are getting a pretty nice buff. All right. Fell Rush, Keen Berserk, buffed. Empowering Rending Throw. Increase the scaling multiplier past 625. Ranged Hatchet Attacks deal armor. Plus, 21, plus 10, 21, 23% weapon is plus 20, 38, 40% damage against Rending Throw targets. Okay. Dang, bro. So, hold on. Rain, oh, it's ra only ranged Hatchet Attacks. Okay. Refreshing distance throw. Increase the scaling post 625. 
Uh, so it now reduces the cooldown if it's on your armor by 34%. If it's on your weapon by 60%. Exhausted infected throw. Bro, there's so many. Look at all these. What the heck, dude? There's so much. There's so much. So exhausted infected throw. They're increasing the base scaling multiplier. So direct hits with infected throw cause exhaustion. All right. Empowering armor breaker. The damage bonus will not scale past 50%. Mighty uh, refreshing mighty gavel increase the weapon's gear score bonus. So mighty gavel hits reduce the weapon, reduce the ability's cooldown by five, nine, eight, ten point five percent on armor and by 14.5, 9.3, and 20 percent on weapons. Okay, okay, all right, all right. We're only halfway. I know there's so many. Penetrating wrecking ball increase the weapon gear score bonus. Wrecking ball penetrates armor five, nineteen, twenty one percent. Weapon 24, 38, 40 percent of the target's armor. Repulsing clear out. Renamed and change functionality uh, to Sundering to Sundering Clear Out. Inflicts Rend, reducing the target's armor by reducing the target's armor. Oh, by okay, on if it's on armor by five eight by five eight point five ten percent. Weapon is 25 percent. These are written so weird. I wish we would have dropped these down in other bullet points here. Like buy and then another bullet point down below. It'd be nice. Leeching Path of Destiny increase the weapon gear score bonus. The heal for armor. 31.8% weapon is 62% of the damage dealt by Path of Destiny. Dang, bro. Refreshing power shot. Remove the on kill trigger. Repulsing stopping power renamed to, re to refreshing stopping power. So that now reduces the cooldown of all of her trapper abilities by 20% and if it's on a weapon by 50%. Accelerated traps. Bro, these are a lot, man. Shockwave and clear out both have sundering perks. Uh, where were the where were the where were they? Uh, repulsing clear out, renamed and changed the functionality to Sundering clear out. Yeah, In inflicts rend. Yes, and then penetrating also. Yes, yes, and then clear out. Where was clear out? Hold on. Yeah, repulsing clear out, Sundering clear out. Yeah, yeah, pretty crazy. Weapon perks actually getting major buffs across the board. They are. It's pretty nuts. So then we have accelerating traps. Or, okay, sweep Coupe de Gras. Increase the bleed damage while on weapons uh, and now applies bleed for armor. So it now applies a bleed for armor as well. 14% and then 28% of weapon damage for uh, if it's on the weapon for eight seconds. Sundering Javelin. It now reduces the Javelin cooldown. It now also reduces the Javelin cooldown. Cyclone now scales better when on weapons. Did it not before? 36% if it's a weapon, 65% of weapon damage. Fortifying perf rate can now stack up to three times an adjusted fortify bonus to armor. Bro, this is this is crazy. Evolve kick increased duration for five to seven seconds. This is so many changes, bro. It's like every single perk in the game. Energizing evade shot. They increase the gear score bonus on weapons and increase scaling past 625. After hitting a target with evade shot, gain 33 stamina, reduce cooldown by armor by 16% if it's on the armor and 55% if it's on the weapon. Lasting Reign of Arrows, increase the gear score bonus on weapons and increase scaling past 625. Slow and bleed. If it's on the armor, they last 22%. Weapon, 45% longer. Refreshing Penetrating Shot, increase the base reduction from 3 to 5% and increase the scaling past 625. All right, Keen Tondo now also reduces damage you take from foes affected by Tondo's bleed. Leeching Flurry, increase the gear score bonus while on a weapon and added one second of invulner invulnerability when activating Flurry. Yo, okay. All right, then. Okay. Increase the gear score bonus while on the weapon and added one second of invulnerability when activating Flurry. Okay. Refreshing, refreshing Fletch. Increase gear score bonus on weapons. Hitting a target via critical backstab with Fletch reduces its cooldown. Uh, okay. If it's on armor, 21% weapon, 40%. Accelerating lights and brace. They lowered the base from 5% or from 5 to 3% and made this more effective on weapons. Allies below full health hit with lights and brace gain haste, increasing their movement speed. Empowering incinerate, increase the gear score bonus when placed on weapons. Increase base fortify and increase the gear score bonus when on weapons for fortifying burnout. Contagious reverse stab now transfers two conditions and the damage scaling has been increased on weapons. Did anybody ever use contagious reverse stab? It's not a, it's not a, uh, I mean, I never use that perk. Rarely use that ability, but you use contagious reverse stab. I never used it. Artifacts are going to be on PTR. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. 
Oh, we haven't gotten to those yet, though. Only on tank. I used it whenever I tank too, but used it on a schizo build. Did you really reverse stab? Back in the day, yeah. I think back in the day, reverse stab was meta. I used it back in the day too, but I haven't used it in a long time for any like PvP build, really. Refreshing charge. Increase the gear score when used on a weapon. Hitting a target with unpredictable strike reduces the cooldown. Crippling reap. They removed the 50% condition. They lowered the duration from three seconds or from four seconds to three seconds. Lower base slow from 0.1 to 0.08. So targets hit with reap are slowed and they reduce the movement speed. Mending execute. Increase the gear score bonus when on a weapon. Uh, the heal for the armor is 33% and the heal for the weapon is 60% of the damage dealt by execute. Insatiable gravity well increase the damage scaling when on a weapon and the scaling past 625. So it now deals 39% when it's on the armor and deals 80% whenever it's on the weapon. Unbroken winds increase the damage scaling on a weapon. All right. This perk now causes a one second route when hitting the same target six times in a row with windshield. Oh, dang, bro. Okay. Ice refresh. I mean, that's pretty nice for windshield. I see, I see windshield getting used every now and then. <laughs> every now and then somebody will break it out. Ice Refresh, renamed to Empowered Ice Spike. This perk has been reworked to deal more damage versus rooted targets. Diminishing Orb, lowered the base damage from 20 to 12.5% and the increase the gear score bonus from 300 to 1,000 when on a weapon. Orb of Decay reduces the duration of the target's non-consumable buffs. Slowing Tether, they renamed to Paralyzing Tether. This perk now causes a root when the tether is broken. Leeching Shrapnel Blast, so they're increasing the gear score bonus on weapons of the damage dealt by leeching shrapnel blast venturing claw shot increased gear score bonus while on weapons all right uh resupply mortar charge increased base gear score bonus on weapons so the mortar charge kills reload one additional canister and grant uh whenever it's on armor 9.5 percent on the weapon 20 percent empowerment crippling blast shot increased the gear score bonus while on weapons bro this is so much to take in leeching crosscut Lower the base seal and increase the gear score bonus when on weapons. Increase scaling past uh, 625. Skyward nullification. Increase gear score bonus on weapons. They increase scaling past 625. Energizing counter. Same thing. Steadfast purification. Same thing. And then slowing rupture. Same thing. Oh my gosh, bro. Then there's still uh, there's armor perk changes too. Dude. Wow. Ice Spike gonna hit so hard, <laughs> bro. <laughs> it's huge. There's a lot of crazy stuff in here, man. There's a lot of crazy stuff in here, dude. There's a lot of crazy stuff in here. Like, this is a massive... Look at this list of perks. Is that my mic? Are you happy about the patch notes? What are you talking about, bro? You mean right here? What are you talking about, dude? Read past ward removal for armor. All right, so we already know all the wards are getting removed. Corruption resistance, uh, that's getting removed. Blight resistance getting removed. Resilient getting removed. Uh, indestructible getting removed. Vigor. Increase the reduction, uh, the effect from 11% to 15% at 700. Okay, all right. We knew we were getting 700. What about musket? Musket changes are crazy, Camp. They're nuts. Anything about golden scarab? Not yet. Invigorated. Increase the reduction of this effect from 11% to 15% at 700. Okay. Shirking heals. Base healing improved from 100 to 200. And percent healing improved from 1% to 1.5%. Okay. A little buff to shirking heals. Siege Ward. This perk can no longer be generated. Our Siege Ward is going on our way too. So new armor perks. Health is 2.4% of max health. All right. Enchanted Ward. 4% damage from light and heavy attacks. Enchanted Ward, that can go on your armor? Bro, what? Enchanted Ward? 4% damage from light and heavy attacks? I want, will that stack? Grit Ward. 4% damage while under the effects of Grit? Oh, negative. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Health is plus 2.4% max health. Enchanted Ward. Negative two, 3.8, and 4% damage from light and heavy attacks. I was about to say, bro, why are we getting increased damage from armor? I was confused. I didn't see the negative. Okay. Okay. So if you put enchanted ward on your gear, negative 4% damage from light and heavy attacks. That's actually crazy, bro. Like if you stack that, that's kind of crazy. 
Grit Ward is, is also reducing by negative 2, 3.84% whenever you're under the effects of Grit. Flame Harmony is increased fire damage. This is actually increased damage. So you can put Flame Harmony on your, on your armor and you can get plus 2% fire damage. And I would assume these stack. Same thing with Ice Damage. Frost Harmony, Shock Harmony, Nature, Void Harmony, Arcane Harmony. Holy crap, dude. So you get additional additional damage from elemental elemental damage this is going to be very interesting can you stack this with attunement I'll, I'll check it out yeah stacking elemental damage is pretty crazy slash conditioning slash damage absorption for five seconds after taking slash damage same thing with thrust and same thing with strike amulet perk changes holy crap dude i'm getting tired reading these notes this is a lot this is this is changing up everything man i mean i expected them to be lengthy but i wasn't i, I didn't honestly expect there to be this many changes to everything flame protection increase the base from two percent to five percent and increased uh base scaling okay hold on flame protection increase the base from two percent to five percent and increase base scaling so now you receive 15 percent less fire damage whenever it's maxed that's flame protection frozen nature void thrust slash arcane lightning strike all those are the same then health renamed to adored health reduced to health bonus from three nine point seven ten to three six seven mana recovery this bird can no longer generate on any newly dropped gear all right so mana recovery is going away fortified recovery reduced cooldown from 90 seconds to 30 seconds to fortified from 10 percent to 20 percent all right fortify recovery reduce school dog okay we read that divine no longer improves the healing from potions okay interesting interesting all right holy macaroni dude mutes will be easier uh i don't know i don't know how mutes are gonna work out because they're squishing them down into three instead of ten we'll see we're gonna see how that works out i don't know new amulet perks alchemist reprieve improves healing from potions by 10 percent. that's an interesting one refreshing recovery when your health drops below 50 percent, all your active ability cooldowns will be reset whoa dude bro that seems like that might be bis uh that seems crazy strong dude that seems a crazy refreshing recovery when your health drops below 50 percent, all of your active ability cooldowns will be reset a 90 second cd that's fine i mean 90 seconds is long that is a long cooldown a minute and a half is a long cooldown but bro can you imagine like that is that's crazy to me that's crazy active so only oh you think so only your active ability cooldowns yeah maybe so so maybe it's only on your active bar but still i think that's gonna be strong bro health refresh recovery thrust protection new bis maybe so that's nuts that's actually nuts i think a lot of people are gonna be going after that perk for sure right out of the gate dude this means we're gonna get a lot of new items we're gonna have to get a lot of new craft mods too right you feel like it's kind of not that good i don't know bro i feel like that's crazy good i feel like that's crazy good yo chick thank you for the follow i appreciate it welcome in a lot to digest a lot to digest i mean this is it's gonna take us a while to figure out the new meta and figure out what's going on it's gonna take, take a lot of people testing a lot of different builds and a lot of different things it's a lot of stuff going on if you're using a weapon with a quick cd it'll be most, mostly wasted true but i mean bro if you're not i don't know i feel like that's crazy good dude ring perk change leeching increase the life gain from one five two point or one five point two five point eight to one 6.3 and 7.1 okay so they're buffing leeching siphoning can no longer get it so all of the damaging perks like fire damage ice nature lightning void arcane thrust slash strike they're increasing the damage bonus from 5.2 percent of max to 7.2 percent okay all right buffing those two brilliant oh keen awareness misses and decrease the crit bonus from uh 13 to seven percent okay so that's that's taking the same route as keen all right because everybody was running keen awareness a lot of people were running keen awareness so i think that's commonly used perks so we've seen that that pattern earlier brilliant this perk can no longer generate on any new newly dropped gear 
Okay, that one's gone. Invigorated Punishment, reduced damage bonus from 2% to 1%. Increase max stacks to 10. Exclusive label, move to damage type. All right. Change to Invigorated Punishment coming in hot there. Market is jumping right now. Probably will be now after the patch notes dropped. Probably will be now after the patch notes dropped. I would imagine like that we're going to have to have some new some new uh perks or some new perk mods craft mods with all this stuff too i would imagine new ring perks healing breeze when you directly heal a target you apply five second healing buff okay when you directly heal a target you apply a five second healing buff which gives you 10 percent weapon damage wait when you directly heal a target you apply five second healing buff it is 10 percent well cassie purifying when you cleanse a condition uh you will heal for 10 percent of weapon damage Purifying heart. When you use a heart gem, you'll lose all conditions. Yo, that's actually... This is pretty nice. Purifying heart might be one that a lot of people use. When you use a heart gem, you will lose all conditions. I mean, that might be nice. That might be really nice. Like a cleanse? Yeah, like a cleanse. Yep, like a cleanse. And it cleanses everything. It cleanses everything. That's pretty crazy. It sounds like it's pretty strong. Uh, I, I would assume so, Dreamer. I would assume so. Uh, don't we have that? Not when you use a heart gym rune, no. Or a heart gym. I always call them heart gym runes because that's what they're called back in the day. Like whenever they first introduced them. I don't think they call them that anymore. I think they just call them heart gems. But... Pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Like Firestorm. Yeah, but that's a perk on the specific on the specific heart heart gym itself like this means anytime you use any heart gym at all it doesn't matter what it is you could be running detonate stone form whatever if you have this on your ring and you pop that heart gym you're gonna lose all your conditions yeah it's just gonna be it's like a big purify whenever you use your heart gym i think that's gonna be pretty strong this may this is probably gonna be bis in a lot of situations for a lot of people i think earring perk changes focus this perk can no longer generate on any newly dropped gear Okay, so focus is going away, beloved's going away, evasive, mana toast, refreshing toast is getting reduced. So reduce the bonus at, to 10% at 700 and reduce base healing and regen potion cooldown from 30 seconds to 25 seconds. Crazy. Some crazy changes. I mean, I don't know if this is so crazy, but there's a lot of other crazy changes. It's a lot to take in. New earring perks. Empowering toast, give 20% of power for four seconds of potion drink. Okay, so that's pretty good. 20% in power for four seconds whenever you drink a potion on Empowering Toast. Bro, I feel like that's going to be Biss too. That's crazy. Fortifying Toast. A 50% Fortify for four seconds on drinking a potion. Oh, you have to drink an Absorption Potion though. The Empower is on any potion. So this is on any potion. 20% in power for four seconds on potion drink. That's, that's bananas to me. Fortifying Toast gives 50% Fortify for four seconds on potion drinking an absorption potion. Healing Heart, heal for 10% of your max health when you use a heart gym. I mean, that's kind of nice too, but I don't feel like that's nearly as good as this. That's nuts, man. Drink a mana and then poke your spear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to be slotting... You better believe I'm taking a powering toast on my earring and I'm gonna be sliding mana potions on my on my bar as a melee player. You best believe that, bro. I'm getting texts like crazy. That's crazy. I'm still wondering how do we upgrade gear? They said legendary stuff starts dropping at 675. You, you can't. You don't upgrade your gear. It's gonna be all dropped now. So there, there's not gonna be a way to update it or upgrade it. You're just gonna have to get gear that drops at that gear score. Remove the ability to upgrade gear with Umber Shards. Umber Shards gonna be salvaged for. Oh yeah, we hadn't got there yet. I don't think to that to that patch note. These are some crazy perks though. Like these perk changes are nuts. Tool perk change, durable. This perk can no longer generate gathering recovery, killing increase from two hundred to three hundred and fifty per second, and increased duration from five to ten per second. Okay, I don't think anybody used gathering recovery, did we? On our tools, I I, I didn't I didn't want that perk on my tool. I'm gonna take a minute for people to get the seven hundred gear score now. It will. It will. It's gonna be a lot of grinding for sure. Check out Runestone Stopwatch recipe of no umbrals. Yeah, they're going to have to change a lot of the recipes that require umbrals to craft, I would imagine. There's a, there's several things. Upgrading heart runes, take it to, or heart gems. Mutation is still season three. I mean, 
you could it's not a bad idea because if you farm you if you farm those you can also salvage your gear and get scraps and then you can bump your your uh your <laughs> your uh crafting up to 250 really quick you know gorman's burden increased weight reduction okay so all of these are just so all of the burden for your bags are just increasing your weight reduction so those look like those are getting a nice little buff that's that's nice i'm okay with that for sure uh plentiful ammo this perk can no longer generate so plentiful ammo is gone thank goodness bro plentiful ammo is gone dude nobody ever used that it's gone town loyalty they're increasing territory standing so that's getting a buff too so now it's 15 percent Town loyalty is going up. Never use that. Yeah, nobody did. That's a great change, too. I feel like they're hitting, bro, so far. I mean, here's the thing. It's going to take a lot of testing on the combat side to see how good a lot of these changes actually are or bad how they are, uh, you know, how good or bad they are. But a lot of the other changes they're making in terms of getting rid of some of these perks, bro, it's really spot on. A lot of this stuff are is very good. So far, I think the patch does have been a huge W. Like, this is crazy. Raper Bleed on Worm is now gone. I mean... There's a lot of crazy stuff. Rip Keen Tondo Worm Gear. Wait, where do you guys see that? Did I miss a per did I miss the Keen Tondo perk up here? Did I miss that? Faction loyalty before. Uh, I think there is a faction loyalty one. Where did I? Oh no. I'm 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 I miss I don't remember where I was. Okay, I haven't seen those. Okay, we're right here. You were just at it. Where was it up there? Did I I probably just oh it was after bags. Okay. Oh, why is this not up there with the other perks? Adjusted the Keen Tondo perk to only provide the benefit of the rapier is active. Yo, but you can still have the... Oh, you you have to have your active rapier. Bro, no, <laughs> no more three-minute worm kills. Rip. That's huge, bro. That's huge, dude. Holy crap. That's going to change speed running in a big way. That's crazy. These changes will do that. They definitely will. That's nuts. That's nuts, man. That's crazy. <laughs> Game mode updates. Notable fixes. Fix an issue that caused players got a nerf musket. You don't like the musket nerfs? I mean, I think changing the musket to from hit scan to uh <laughs> to projectile is incredible. I, I, I you know I think it should have been done a long time ago. It's only 20% uh crit chance, it's not a huge nerf. What do you mean for uh for for King Tondo? But everyone was, everyone had Tondo on their gear, though. I think that's a massive nerf, especially for something like speedrunning. Fixing issue that caused players to get stuck in ADS when loading into the game modes when specific abilities are active. Okay, that's good. Apple's Rush. I mean, it would be nice if we seen like new map or something under here. Unfortunately, I'm not getting that. But we have skills players to gear score 675 as previously 600. Increased structure, HP and evasions, wars, outpost rush to account for player power. Okay. Fix issue that caused interactive prompt. Okay. Fix an issue that caused corrupted portal UI event to display. Okay. All right. Just some small fixes to OPR. Economy progression and gear. PvP reward changes. Previously, a player needed to be alive for at least 10 minutes for another player to earn a PvP, XP, Azoth salt when killing them. All right. Wait, what? Previously, a, a player needed to be alive for at least 10 minutes. Okay. So, yeah, okay. We ran into this problem a lot whenever we kill someone and they hadn't been alive for 10 minutes or they weren't flagged for 10 minutes. Players now earn a nominal amount of PvP, XP, and Azo Assault, 25 each. They kill another player in the open world no matter how long the other player's been alive. I think that's kind of nice. I mean, you can't have it be a lot or else people would abuse this and they just farm people, but a nominal amount, at least you get something. After a player has been alive for five minutes, they'll be worth 400. Okay, so they're ramping it up. And then after 10 minutes, they'll be worth 800. That's nice. The chance to earn loot from an open world PvP kill has been adjusted. So after the player was live for 10 minutes, they had a 75% chance of dropping loot in 33 minutes. 100% chance. Now, after the player's been alive for five minutes, there's a 50% chance they would drop loot. And then after 10 minutes, there's a 75% chance. Okay, those are all good. A little bit of incentivization to do open world PvP. The seasonal XP is has increased when killing a player in the open world. 1, 5, and 10 XP or 10, 50 or 100 XP, depending on how long you've been alive. Change the Azal Salt reward for reaching PvP rank 205,000. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So those are some, I think these are some fine changes for overall PVP. seems good. General raise the maximum gear score from 625 to 700. We knew that raise the maximum crafting level uh, to 250 from 200. We knew that reduce the experience required to progress from one to 20 mastery weapon mastery by roughly 30%. This is kind of nice. I think because 
what is the point in going out and grinding your weapons up in new world you really want to be able to change your stuff around you know what i mean like you want you want the, to, to be able to freely switch up your your stuff so i think reducing that grind is fine i i, I like that change for sure no you can't lose your weapon to a random player that's not what that means like whenever you drop loot you don't actually drop your loot it's just a random piece of loot that, that gets generated by the game think about like killing a mob and they drop a piece of loot that's exactly what happens whenever you kill a player in the open world you don't actually drop your loot at all yeah you're not dropping you're not you're not dropping anything at all it is it is uh just a random piece of loot that the game will generate that'll drop so they increase the family based ward potion duration. Okay, so here's a change. Here's a change because I'm getting rid of ward stuff. So they increase the family based ward potion duration, decrease their value to 5, 7, and 10%. These buffs will no longer end based on a number of hits. All right, so there, there it is. So they increase the durations and they no longer, longer end based on a number of hits. So that'll be kind of what we use to replace ward, I guess. Reduce the luck bonus of the spring tide dram to make it more similar to the other luck consumables. Oh boy. All right. Well, if you're using that, then, uh, you know, yo, Rob's Rob's burner. God, leave it all. Fix an issue where weapon coding persisted after swapping gear sets. Fix an issue where weapon coding persisted after swapping gear sets. Okay. So it's not supposed to, I guess. Introduced uh, loot biasing, a new system that will skew the outcome of loot drops towards players, equipped weight, primary and secondary attributes and equipped weapon types. All right. So that's nice. That armor shard thing is big. It's huge. There's lots of huge changes in here for sure. But yeah, it's a big one. Uh, loot biasing is going to be nice as well. I think this will be a huge change for the game. 100%. This is this is good. Trade skills. Players will now find new rare items in gathering. They can be processed at a refining station for bonus gathering trade skill experience. Okay. Gathering research items are now limited to three crafts per day per item. There it is, chat. There it is. I think they're doing that. I think they're doing that so that you can't just fly up in your gathering trade skills because people have been hoarding those things. Fixed a, fixed a crafting issue that caused the rushing ice gauntlet pattern to not reward a gym slot with the item. All right. Umbral shards. Here it is, Chad. Here's the huge change. Remove the ability to upgrade gear with umbral shards. Okay. Umbral shards can now be salvaged for coin at a rate of 0.1 coin per umbral shards. There it is. So no longer upgrading with Umbral Shards. Umbral Shards are going away. You have to salvage them to get your coin. It's going to be 0.1 coin per Umbral Shard, dude. Oh, boy. All right. Well, hey, I have a lot of them. So, you know, I'll get a decent payday whenever this happens. <laughs> they couldn't do it one per one or people would be rich. I mean, there'd be there'd be too many people that are rich. They couldn't do it. 100,000 Shards is worth 10K coin. Yeah. Notable fixes. Fix an issue that did not allow for some retired quest rewards to be salvageable. Thank goodness, bro. That is nice, dude. Thank goodness. 10k equals 1k coin. Yeah, exactly. Still too high. Uh, I, I mean, I think that's probably fine. Because I don't know. I mean, I don't know how many players in the game actually have stacked up a crap load of umbrals. I have. I probably have 400k umbrals. You know, it's like 40k. Fix an issue that prevented crafted versions of Outpost Rush War items from being salvaged. Fix an issue with human bane trophies that caused them to not apply damage bonus to all human type enemies. I did not know that was a thing. Bro, I did not know that was a thing. A lot of people have storage sheds full. I, I mean, whenever we say a lot of people, how many people are we talking about though? I, I, I don't think there's any way there's like a huge part of the population that has that, right? Surely not. I think there are people that do for sure. I think there are people that do for sure, but... Like, Umbrals took a long time to get, yeah. 1K, you did pop it. You did. You were right on the money, bro. Fix an issue that prevented invasion reward caches from giving named items. As a part of this change, the number of armor pieces given was reduced by one. And jewelry is now guaranteed reward. All right. Higher rarity caches now have an increased chance of giving a named item. I wish invasions were or a little bit different than they are in the game right now, but okay. We won't go into that. So box fixed an issue that caused fishing research notes to be labeled as logging research notes at the kitchen. All right. Seasons, bro. We're almost there. We're getting close to being done. Seasons added the ability to pin up to three season journey tasks, challenges or activities. Introducing the wild card stamp upon logging in each day, players will earn one wild card stamp that can be used to stamp any space in activity card. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's just the activity card thing. It's just a, it's like a bonus. So you can earn additional wildcard stamps by completing row of activities. So you just get an additional stamp on your season reward. 
It'll just let, allow you to progress a little bit faster is what that is. Yeah, yeah. 755k shards, not counting the boxes uh, and stuff I have. Yeah, and you've, and you've ran, you're one of the top PvEers probably in the entire game. And that's what I mean. Like, I'm sure there are people that have like a couple million stacked up, but even then that's what, 200k? It's like, bro, it's not that, you know. It can't be that, you know. It can't be that. It can't be that like prevalent where people are just going to get absolutely crazy rich off umbrals with that conversion, I wouldn't think. At least it's something. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad. What patch note version is this? I, I am not sure what they're calling this one. What about gypsum? I don't know. I haven't seen anything about gyps gypsum yet. Fix an issue where a player was unable to close the season's menu with the escape key upon claiming uh, play two songs activity stamp after the end of a performance. Fix an issue that caused some seasonal crafted items to not grant the correct salvage material. Then we have UI UX social. Game mode menus and weapon mastery icons will now show PvP balance differences. Change the ASOS salt vials so that they will appear in the next container list when opening reward containers. The action list with general interactions available for siege weapons and camps has been updated to more clearly present function. Hold on, wait, what? The action list with general interactions available for siege weapons and camps has been updated to more clearly present functions surrounding more options. Okay, so you fix an issue that caused the currency cap tooltip to display the wrong value when hovering over it for the first time. Bro, I didn't know that was a thing, but uh, if I hovered over my currency cap, oh, it's currency cap. Never mind. I was thinking currency. It's like, bro, if I hovered, hovered over currency, you told me I had like 400K and I really only had 20. That'd feel bad. Fix an issue that caused item salvage animation to not play for item salvage in the storage screen. PvP can no longer be toggled on or off while the PvP icon is hidden able to be interacted with. Move the circle around the button icon when gathering. This prompt previously implied players needed to hold the button when only a key press was required. Okay, that's kind of nice. Updated the accept mission pop-up for faction PvP missions when the character is not PvP active, so players are less likely to unintentionally switch a PvP uh, active character. All right, we're almost finished, chat. We have notable fixes. Oh, we're so close. I still haven't seen anything about gypsum. I don't know. Not sure. Could make Umbral Shard's zone currency and make Umbral Shard unique item shop instead of gold. I could, but I think that would I'd require a lot more work probably. But then what would you do when people ran out of Umbral Shard? You just remove the store? Fix an issue where players did not get a reward celebration screen when opening a major corruption ca a corrupted cash invasion. Cash, war cash, transmog token. For, okay. Fix an issue where incorrect icons were being used in the faction shop when purchasing faction XP. Okay. Fix an error message. Uh, exiting a musical performance and trying to re-enter the mode again too quickly for better clarity. Fix an issue that caused recall the house button on the side panel of the map to not refresh after the player paid days off to, refer to reset the cooldown. Fix an issue that caused the compass to not update properly. Fix an issue where looting multiple sets of items in quick succession could lead to some items not appearing in the HUD. Fix an issue where you could scroll the gear set storage window while a bind Unequip confirmation pop-up uh, was up, causing you to equip the item to the wrong gear set. All right. Fix an issue where you could purchase coin or faction tokens for PvP reward track, even though you're already at maximum for those currencies. That's kind of nice. That's kind of nice because that sucks if you purchase that and you waste it. Fix an item that caused debuff to flicker randomly when receiving recovering resistance damage. Fix an issue that prevented locked item from being fixed with repair all button. Fix the daily reset timer on time projects board so it no longer overlaps with the hourglass icon. Thank goodness. Tooltip text fixes. I don't like overlapping text, bro. It drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. Are we finally able to see the nodes of the compass? I don't think so, no. Section of the stuff that they broke, bro. <laughs> Hopefully that's not gonna happen. Corrected the quest named uh in the milestone tooltip for Azoth staff progression. Fix typos in the cross world tooltips. All right, so this is just a bunch of tooltip fixes. Nothing crazy there. Some visual fixes. I don't think there's anything crazy there. Let's read the faction stuff though. After leaving the winning faction, the menu text will now update to reflect, the, to reflect that you cannot switch back to the winning faction. What does that mean? What does that mean? After leaving the winning faction, what does that mean? The menu text will now update to reflect that you cannot switch back to the winning faction. What does that mean? Faction with the most territory. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I, I'm a dummy. Yeah, you know, you're right. I'm a dummy. Yeah, okay. I'm a dumb dumb. I don't know what I was thinking like. Yeah, I mean, I know this means you can't faction jump, but I was thinking like winning faction. I was trying. I was thinking about how you're going to push territory now and the factions are going to go at it within the timed frames or whatever. I was thinking that something some big change was happening there. But I yeah, I see. 
the number one faction as in the faction that owns the most territory got it fixed an issue that prevented players from switching factions using the new faction npc on the faction selection screen the players will now be able to select their current faction again after having selected a different faction the join button will now properly enable every time an eligible faction is highlighted in the faction uh, select screen the faction text now updates when faction no longer winning factions select the menu when a player tries to switch factions through an npc but is in a company the join button will be grayed out and a tooltip will explain that the player must leave the company to switch faction the player is no longer able to promote fa a factionless company member to governor all right so you can't be factionless to be governor there will now be a warning to explain why and then they fix some audio stuff holy moly bro these patch notes are massive insanely massive there is a lot to digest and a lot to go over here obviously we're going to spend a lot of time on the ptr trying to test a bunch of this stuff ptr goes live tomorrow morning i probably won't be live on the ptr tomorrow morning but i will be playing the ptr tomorrow night a whole lot and uh we will be we'll be hammering out getting some content up for that too pretty crazy pretty crazy yeah i don't know sparks i don't know that's wild that is so crazy man but that'll do it for the patch notes chat that's it that's it we be streaming tomorrow night for the ptr uh, I, I don't know potentially but m more than likely not i think overall these patch notes are a w for the game man i think overall they're a w youtube i'm sorry these patch notes were so incredibly long thank you guys for sticking through it i appreciate it a whole lot but that's it that's it for the patch notes thank you for watching this video as well i appreciate it if you enjoyed new world enjoy new world content please make sure to like and subscribe as well we'll be on the ptr a ton and then we'll have a lot more new world content coming up on the channel of course to relay all the information that we have on the ptr but again thank you guys for being here i greatly appreciate it and we stream over on twitch.tv slash bdlg every monday every friday and then on the weekends every monday eight o'clock a.m cst every friday eight o'clock a.m cst and then on the weekends we throw in a random stream there as well but thank you guys again i appreciate it we'll see you in the next one